This theology, this is mythology. Now, I get a lot of people that attack me because I only have a mythological, astrotheological, and allegorical perspective of the scriptures and no historical Jesus. Now, I'm aware of many great writers that, like Yogananda, Paramhansa, that believe that Jesus actually lived. And he knows all of this. He knows all of this stuff. Rudolf Steiner. Guys of that caliber that were doing the same science as I'm doing, and yet they subscribe to a historical Jesus. Now, my greatest inspiration in occult wisdom is Thomas H. Burgoyne. And Thomas H. Burgoyne says that Jesus, the historical, was a merging of three characters. The Egyptian Osiris, Apollonius of Tyana, now forgive me if that spelling is wrong, and Jesus the Essene. You see, the doctrine, in the doctrine of the coming one, or in the doctrine of the, the avatar, Jesus is always coming. And as we go through these consciousness states, here is Gemini, this was the Garden of Eden 6,000 years ago, then we fell into lust in the Taurian age. And then we got inspired to be martial and we did a lot of killing. In the, in the Greek days, Alexander going around conquering the world, Cyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, Sennacherib, Amenhotep. But that all happened here in Mars. And now we are here in the wealth and money of Jupiter, Zeus, Jesus. So as we go through these states of consciousness and we are being built up as we go, Certain avatars and inspired ones are given to us. None of this, the mythological and astrotheological part of the Bible or part of this sign, absolutely categorically excludes a historical Jesus. And so this is why some of these great teachers that I have, probably except for types like you know, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, who just did not subscribe at all to a, to a historical Jesus. And many of the great writers do not subscribe at all to historical Jesus. But within this science and the doctrine of the coming one, every 600 years, the earth produces someone that turns up in history that symbolizes perfectly the consciousness that has arrived. And that's how it happens. This is why we still hear talk about a Jesus. No, there was a, Freemasons believe that there, were a, there was a Jesus, but this is Freemasonry. But they absolutely subscribe to a historical Jesus. Because if there was Jesus the Essene, Jesus Ben Panthera, as Celsus tells us 2,000 years ago, uh, well, he would have been someone who saved himself. These men saved themselves, they become avatars. You know, just a couple hundred years after Jesus, there was Akiba, the great Jewish rabbi, teacher, who ascended. Men ascend. We will ascend. But, but the earth and history does produce these holy men. And so this particular historical Jesus, if you must have a historical Jesus, was a, a good man that taught this. How do we know? Because he had 12 apostles. It was all about the Zodiac. But please never be confused with the Jesus that is in this book. This reads like a myth, looks like a myth, therefore it is a myth. And a myth is not a story, hocus pocus. A myth is the greatest of truths. Truths that the profane can never grasp. That book is full of myths, beautiful myths, written in the skies by the language of God, astrology. It's all about astrology. And so, I have never treated this subject in my presentations because 
this Jesus who saved himself like Buddha did, and I'll go through, um, we're going to go through this circle and we're going to find out how, those, how Buddha manifested. Mercury's Buddha many thousands of years ago and how Jesus manifested as Zeus over here. And Muhammad manifested as Venus over here. We'll get into that. But that's all it means. Muhammad is all about Venus here in the age of Pisces, the late comer. Because he, he came 600 years exactly to the day after Jesus. Because there is, there is always a 600 year period in the doctrine of the Avatar. In the doctrine of the Saviour, the coming one. That's what Jesus means. You, I, you, in Jesus. The I and the you means the coming one. Always he's coming. There are seven heroes here. Perseus is here. And as this wheel goes around, as that wheel goes around, it's always coming. There's always someone coming. Here is Bootes. Here is Leo and Regulus, the beautiful star. Here is the Cancer and the Bark of Ra. Here is Pollux, where everybody's waiting for Pollux. Here comes Orion in Taurus. Here is Cassiopeia and Perseus, the ram. Here is Cephas, the one who has his foot on the North Pole, and he's always coming. Here is Aquarius, the saviour. Here is the goat, the saviour of Israel, the scapegoat. Here is Sagittarius, the centaur, coming to save us. There's always a saviour, always coming. This is the coming one. And so, as we go around in these periods, we see, we can find all the characters. This is why the... This is also why the Muslim Islamic flag has the crest of Venus on it, and it's green. But it's, it happens to be Venus in this, in this context, in Pisces. So Muhammad, they are Venetian. The Moors are Venetian. This Jesus here, who came, and pretty much inherited the title of Messiah, because, because he ascended the oils. What happened was Jesus the priest merged with Christ the consciousness. And this happens in the body. So that's why this particular Jesus that turns up here had the Jupiterian was the progeny of the, the planet Jupiter. The planets are actually bodies of angels. They are archangels. And they are beings of many, many angels. And when they turn up, they produce the right consciousness that someone in history turns up and inherits. It's pretty much like if you want to... Okay, if you want to have a symbol of science, you would use the face of Einstein, wouldn't you? to be the definitive face of science. If you wanted to find the definitive face of the Renaissance, you would have the face of Leonardo da Vinci. Because Leonardo da Vinci was the symbol that 500 years ago that typified the Renaissance. So all you've got to do is use that face. Well, when you see faces of Jesus, <laughs> you'll notice that it's the face of Jupiter, the jovial one. You see? It's just a symbol. They've just used a good man, a prophet, that many of the great researchers understand and put in its proper place, that it's just a man. It's just you. It's, we are all those messiahs that came. And I'm going to go back and show all the messiahs that have come and show how they correspond with the planets in those signs. But eventually it will be you that is that messiah. So here we've found Moses, the period of Moses, Mars, and also Abram. So Abram turned up, guys. Yeah, he turned up. And so did Moses. Abram was supposed to be here 4,000 years ago. Moses is here 1,500 years ago. Moses, when the 18th dynasty of Egypt was kicking butt. 
and there was the Amenhotep's and the tough Moses's. Ooh. Toph and Moses. If it is an Egyptian word. Well, of course it is. It's all from Egypt. And Moses was learned in the wisdom of Egypt. The wisdom of Egypt. It's not the so-called wisdom of Egypt. It's truth. Not the truth. You see, the churchgoers are living in the land of subjective truth. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses says, Oh, I'm in the truth. They are enemies of truth by being in the truth. Because it's the lie. It's the lie that they accept as their version of this, which is truth. It's their corrupted version. The priests don't teach you any of this. Before that was Venus. Venus is the ruler of Taurus, and the moon exalts. These were the sinners of Moses. Remember Mount, Moses climbed Mount Sinai, and, but he killed the bull. But see, that's where the word sinner comes from, anyone who follows the moon religion. So that prophet, whoever it was that turned up here, and that would have been, well, Hathor. See, Egypt was... Hathor was very popular here. This is Hathor. You've got Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Peter and Paul, and Muhammad. Now you can go back and you can find them all. But this is how the theology works. As above, so below. This is why people cannot detach themselves from the historical Jesus. Oh, I need a historical Jesus. We don't need a historical Jesus. It's not needed at all. He was a saviour. He saved himself. Goodbye. We save ourselves. We become saviors. We become Jesus's. It's the story of us. Let's go for break.